Hello and welcome to this second video on oscillators in the Synth Basic series. So in the previous video, you had a look at the oscillators in isolation in Voltage Modular. So you could see how different oscillators perform and the different controls that are available on them. In this video, we're going to look at the same kind of thing, but in real synthesizers in the wild, as it were. So looking at how the controls vary, how they're named differently, and just how they work in real synths. So let's get started straight away by looking at the TRIP synth engine in Halion Sonic SE running in Cubase. So here we have a Halion Sonic SE set up in an instrument track and we want to load up TRIP. So we can click on all instrument sets and pick TRIP and then load the init TRIP sound by filtering here, double clicking, you should see it load up here and then over on the edit page, we get to see it. Now, on the left hand side of the screen, I've got a supervision set up with an oscilloscope at the top and spectrum curve at the bottom. So you can see the harmonics and the waveform. And if I play a sine wave, lo and behold, we get what looks like a sine wave, but the harmonics here show it's not actually a perfect sine wave. So it's got a couple of harmonics which shouldn't be there with a sine wave. So it's to all intents and purposes, it is a sine wave, but it's not precisely a sine wave. Uh, we've got, interestingly, it says type here. So rather than saying waveform, it's the type of oscillator. So we can go through to pick triangle and we can see it's a bit sharp tooth. If we play a lower frequency, you can see it's got a bit of a curve and it's got a, an unusual harmonic balance for a triangle. There's, there's far more harmonics than you would expect from a triangle waveform. Sawtooth got quite a curve in it and quite an unusual harmonic balance this probably accounts for its harshness it sounds harsh and interesting as a a waveform and this is why so the the straight line kind of uh, textbook sawtooth like this wouldn't sound this way at all we've also got a uh, square wave in pwm and as you can see it's it's mostly just a very short downwards and then possibly most of the rest of the time upwards pulse you need to control it with this waveform control so previously we've seen that as pulse width control but here it's called wave and then we can go through that and get it to about 50 50 ish and we see that the square wave has actually got quite a curve much like the vintage oscillators we've seen last time so this again explains why this sounds this way. It doesn't sound like a textbook square wave, which has got quite a different sound to it and a different balance of harmonics. Now, before we move on to the other oscillator types, let's look at the controls. So we've seen instead of tuning where you've got feet, you know, 64, 32 feet, etc., we've got octave here. So it's just a switch and it will play. I mean, you can see we've got four octaves each way range. So we've got quite a wide range of pitches here, wider than some of the other synths we've seen. We've got coarse tune, which is in semitones. And then fine tune, which is in cents and allows you to go basically a semitone each way by going 100. So that's fairly nice. We can add multiple oscillators. So this is a common theme, as we'll see across all the other synths we're going to look at. We didn't see that in Voltage Modular, partly because it would have muddied the waters somewhat, and also because it meant doing a lot of wiring up, which would have drawn away from what we wanted to look at. However, here, we can just turn it on and magically it will work. So now we're going to get a square wave and a sine wave at the same pitch, and we can see. Let's just set that to be zero. And we can see we've got that superimposed on top. So we've got this curved square wave. Let's try a different waveform, let's try a triangle. There we go, we've got something that looks quite strange in relation. And we can keep doing this kind of thing, sawtooth, and even square. Now if we put a square, we've got a pulse on top of it. So we've got this little pulse and then the rest of it, and then we can play around with the relationship. And you can see we can come up with some interesting waveforms just by doing this. And obviously if we add another oscillator into the equation let's just try that there even without playing around with anything else we've got something new and then maybe we can take this down an octave we've got a new sound so even though we're supposedly just using three 
uh, square waves, as it were, but by changing the pulse width and their octave relationships, there's a lot that can be done. And this is definitely the case throughout here, because you imagine here we've got, even if you just stick to these four, you've got all the possibilities here and different octaves, different levels, different course and fine tuning, etc. There's a lot you can do. However, TRIP gives us a hint of something which we're going to be looking at later on in the modulation section of this video course, as it were, but that's coming in a while. So it gives us sync waveform. So we're just going to look at this very briefly. So a sync waveform here is basically gets reset at a certain time. So if I go back to zero, we just get a normal sine wave. But if we move this up, you can see that it's getting restarted at some point. And this point gives us this discontinuity that generates a whole load of harmonics. Look how we've gone from pretty much a sine wave with hardly any harmonics to suddenly having a whole load and a much brighter sound. And as we go up, we can see it comes and goes depending on where we are in the waveform. And you can see those here, those different harmonics being accentuated. So there we're getting just that being accentuated because that's the pitch that we're generating by restarting it. But it works differently. Well, it works the same, but you get a quite different effect. So with the saw, we get some really aggressive sounds coming out of there. And if we add in something else as well. So I'll leave you to play with that. There's a fair bit to be done. And we will look at this in more detail, in the theory of it in the modulation section because it's much more to do with one oscillator being modulated by another but that's something for you to experiment with and have a bit of fun with uh, creating some definitely quite attacking sound so generally when you see sync on an oscillator you will get that kind of much harsher harmonic rich sound so that's trip which is part of Halion sonic se next up in the synths which nearly everybody will have is prologue which is a festival of stainless steel skeuomorphism. So it tries to look like, I don't know, it's maybe it's a kitchen utensil. It's not something that I'm a fan of the user interface, but it's, it's probably a synth that you do have. And there is a couple of interesting things about it. So let's take a look at it now. So here's Prologue, and before we do anything, let's just turn the oven on. Uh, no, sorry, let's turn the cut off all the way up. So this will allow us to just listen to the oscillators because that's what we want so just take this central knob and turn it up so that dinner is ready at uh, eight o'clock with that out of the way let's listen to just oscillator one because that's the only one that's turned up by default which is fairly useful so these are the volume controls for our oscillators so I just find the, the layout of this is a bit weird it's like somebody just wanted it to look a, per, a particular way rather than wanted to make it consistent and, and maybe a little easier to understand. Anyway, if we play now, we get a sawtooth. Just going to turn the volume up so we see it and hear it a bit more clearly. But we can see it's got that slightly curved waveform, similar kind of harmonics. But what's interesting is the sawtooth selected here. We actually see the harmonic distribution. We're not seeing the waveform, which is an unusual but quite interesting choice. We can pick a parabolic. That's not a waveform we've seen anywhere else. And you can see it's this kind of rectified sine wave almost. Again, not too harsh sounding, but it's got quite a lot of harmonics in there. Square wave. Classic curved kind of square wave we would expect. Triangle wave. Quite a lot of curvature on it. Quite a lot of harmonics, but again, different to what we saw with trip and the sine wave and this time it really is a sine wave so we've just got this one fundamental there's no harmonics there at all that is a sine wave we've also got some other waveforms which are maybe moving away from oscillators if you were being you know super picky about it but they give you some interesting waveforms to play around with so we've got what they call a formant waveform and you can hear that it's, it's like the accenting that you get in a voice we've got a vocal source waveform which is much more complicated than any of the other waveforms we've seen and then things like reso pulse etc so you can have a bit of a play with those get your head around those but you see that the controls are 
pretty much the same as what we've seen previously. They just look a bit different. Course tune. Now this one's a bit vicious because it's it's quite easy to get it on the wrong uh, octave. You end up typing things in, and we got fine tune. Again, only 50 semitone. Sorry, only 50 cents each time. Now not a hundred, so you so you can only go halfway to the next uh, semitone. You you can't go all the way. We can turn on the other oscillators just as we saw before. So let's turn on this oscillator here. Let's pick. Um, let's go up. See, I do this quite a lot. It just you have to be very careful with the way you let go of it. And there we go. We can see that's now giving us quite a an interesting waveform. And we can add in a third oscillator. Pick. Let's pick formant one just for. So we can hear by adding that in, you know, it sounds much more organy by that kind of thing. And there's a clue to the way that uh, a lot of drawbar organs work. The fact that that makes you think of that sound. So although I say I'm not a fan of the kitchen utensil look that, that Prologue has, it's worth having a look because it just gets you around the idea that you probably know the controls. They just appear in a different way. So that's Prologue. I think I've already made it abundantly clear. I'm not a fan of the kitchen utensil look to it, but it's got some interesting waveforms which are worth playing around with, and it's worth using. Slightly weird, slightly unusual sense. So you get the idea that the knowledge that you've got is transportable to different situations. You can apply it and realise that they're, they're still just oscillators. They've just got different controls or, or weird chrome on them and stuff. Next up, we're going to have a look at Retrolog, which I appreciate not everyone has. It doesn't come with every version of Cubase, but it's got a couple of interesting features that I want to take a look at. So that's where we're going next. So here you can see Retrolog on screen, and the areas we're interested in are the oscillators, which are down the left-hand side. It's got this left-hand to right-hand flow, generally, of the signal, which makes... Uh, logical sense if nothing else at least if you read left to right so let's look at oscillator one so here we can see the waveform selection is reasonably familiar sine triangle sawtooth and square and when we move to square this shape control comes on so here it's called shape rather than pulse width or wave as we saw in another synth earlier on um yeah pretty standard we can see we haven't got the same degree of curvature as we saw elsewhere um, we've got some curves in there and the harmonics are well that's more like a standard triangle wave although still pretty unusual um, and the sine wave again is not a perfect sine wave so the uh, sine wave association will be onto them for misappropriation of harmonics we've got octave selection with the traditional feet notation coarse and fine tune as well so semitones you know switching and in this case fine tune of a whole semitone either way which makes it much easier to tune where you want it to be the reason i wanted to show you this is because the oscillator modes are quite useful they call it type here but then they called something else type earlier on so pff, no consistency anyway um we're not going to look at sync cross and all, although we've seen sync earlier on with trip, but we're going to look at multi. So multi is the interesting thing here because it allows you to sort of simulate having more than one oscillator doing the same job. So when you turn it like this, it's not, it's just the same. But if you turn this number up, uh, weirdly you can do it with fractions of a voice, but it can go up to eight. So let's go all the way up to eight. And we can hear that sounds a bit phasey, but as soon as you put in some detuning, we suddenly get this, I've got lots of things playing the same kind of sound. Which is often a sound that you want. You know, a lot of the big synth sounds have multiple uh, oscillators playing the same thing with this kind of big unison mode, etc. So this this is the area I thought was quite interesting. And um, There are other synths that do this kind of thing, and you can thin it out. So there we've just got a couple, and they're slightly out of tune because I set it to be out of tune, so we get that classic my analog synth is heating up and no longer holds a tune in a bucket kind of vibe um yeah that's pretty much it here so we can see that oscillator two and oscillator three do pretty much the same 
We've got a sub oscillator, which is much simpler, much like the simple oscillators we saw later on in voltage modular, where we've just got waveform selection. We don't get pitch or anything like that, and we can fix the phase or not. We don't need to concern ourselves with that at this point. And we've also got a noise oscillator, which has got four waves to choose from. So white, pink, bandpass white. So you hear this has got a mid-range sort of bias to it, and the same for the pink. So that's the salient points of Retrolog, particularly the oscillator multi-mode, which gives you access to those big synth sounds where you had many oscillators doing the same job. The kind of thing that would have been the, the remit of big prog rock bands with their massive Moog modular synths with everything all supposedly doing the same job, but because they were doing slightly different job because they were slightly at tune with each other, you actually got this big sound. If they were all working in perfect unison, it wouldn't have sounded the same as you heard when there was no detune applied. Next, we're going to take a look at the PG8X, which is a third-party implementation of Roland's classic GX8P synth. Right, so here we see the PG8X on its default patch, and in this case, the oscillators are called DCOs. So this is just... A bit of historical nomenclature, really. So, so in the real JX8P, these were digitally controlled oscillators. So they were analog oscillators that were controlled digitally to give them uh, an improvement in their pitch stability. So we don't need to concern ourselves too much with this. Uh, if we were being pedantic, we could probably say that all of these are digitally controlled. After all, they're all in software, which is running on a digital computer. But we could uh, end up in the weeds there. So let's not worry too much about that. They are oscillators. That's the most important thing. So we can see here we have a more limited feature set. So if we're looking about anything that's not modulation, we've really only got three controls on our oscillator one. We've got range in feet. We've got a waveform, so a sawtooth with a nice bit of curvature there. And notice it's got a different harmonic balance. It's got a different curve. It doesn't curve downwards like many we've seen. It curves up. We've got a pulse, which really is a very narrow pulse. We've got a square wave with, again, a curve on it and behaving differently in terms of harmonics. And then we've got noise. We've got tuning, which obviously isn't going to affect the noise waveform, but... A step at a time and then if we look at dco2 i'm just going to turn one down and two up so we can hear that it's very much the same just that we have got a fine tune control which again gives us that 50 cents up and down ability to tune to every possible pitch although slightly awkwardly as if we wanted to go 51 up we'd have to go up another semitone here and then down 49 so it's slightly annoying sometimes, but that's just the features we've been given. So there you go. We've taken a look at four real-world synth oscillator implementations. They've got different features on each, but as you've probably noticed, most of them have the same kind of things on there. They just change the way the controls work, give you some extra options, take some options away in the case of some of these synths, and just gaining confidence in your knowledge and being able to alter just these few parameters is an important step in moving into being able to program synths. So what I'd suggest to do is to load up a synth sound that you like on a subtractive synth, so these kind of synths, and then play around with the oscillate settings, see what it does. Uh, see if your predictions for what it does lines up with what actually happens, because increasingly as you get to know what you're doing, that's what will happen. You'll know exactly what controls to alter and what result that will give you. Try changing the octave, try changing the waveform, try changing the tuning, etc., turning them on and off and so on. The more you do this and the more synths you do it on, the better you'll get at this. And you'll get to learn the idiosyncrasies of each synth, whether they're square waves, sound a particular way, this, that and the other. But try and concentrate just on the oscillators for the time being. There are other parts of the synth which will be probably much more creative in the long run, but getting a good understanding of the basics of this is the foundation on which everything else will be built on. 
So as ever, I hope you found this useful. And if you have, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.